So welcome back to uh, EU R&I Days uh, 2022. Uh, thanks to Cigna and the uh, mission boards. And we want to keep talking about missions. We want to talk about mayors uh, with a mission uh, in just a couple of minutes, uh, after which uh, upcoming there will be 14 uh, parallel sessions starting at 1400 uh, CET, uh, including several on youth and uh, then on the EU missions. But let me give you a couple of tech tips uh, remind you of a couple of tech tips. Can we put up that uh, that one slide? We got it up there um, about exploring exploring these five EU missions that we're talking about with the the, the, the mission boards and also with the mayors with the, of the with the mission uh, is uh, these EU missions. And if you click around, you get to those um, you get to those uh, from the exhibitions button that you see at the top of your um, of your platform platform on the um, as you're watching the show, and this is very important to click around. Here you, we're clicking there at uh, Restore Our Ocean and Waters Mission. There's, there are five different missions there, and if you click on that and you click on Explore, then you get uh, to a lot of these other little buttons that if you click on each individual one, you see more explanation of what these missions uh, are about. That's, that's very important to do. And you're also uh, seeing what uh, kinds of missions you would like to uh, be a part of. And uh, you can go back to the village button and you can uh, click toward uh, your policy officers to book a one on one to talk about how you can get uh, further involved. Um, let me mention one more thing. Let's see, at, uh, at 1500 CET, uh, there's another workshop. Um, and I'd also think about the networking with the other participants. Uh, look them up on the participants section uh, and then contact them uh, in the messages page. Uh, for any kind of live event, you can, of course, uh, ch chat in the chat box that is there on your screen. And keep in mind that hashtag RIDaysEU, hashtag RIDaysEU for anything you've heard and like to cast wider. I'm Chris Burns. I'll see you later. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome at this plenary session called Mayors with a Mission. Now, you may be a bit hungry, but please stick with us for 45 minutes because we have four really very inspiring mayors with us today in this session, and you definitely want to listen to them to learn more about the mission these mayors have embark themselves on to actually become first cities in the European Union that will be climate neutral by 2030. Okay, but before we basically go uh, into the session and I will introduce our magnificent mayors uh, in a second, uh, first I would like to know a bit more about you. So please go to slido.com, uh, use the hashtag that you are now all by now very familiar with, uh, and please type in the city that you are connecting from today. So just the city, because it would be really cool to see, you know, where we have the audience from and maybe you're in the city of one of our mayors, and uh, maybe a completely uh, other city, uh, and we will revisit uh, the poll uh, later on. Maybe just a few words about the, the cities that we, uh, that we have uh, selected. So basically we have launched this mission where we wanted to have 100 climate neutral cities in the European Union by 2030. We were a bit nervous when we were actually launching this call for these cities because we were like, okay, you know, this is really a very, very, very ambitious challenge. Uh, but then we received an overwhelming amount of applications. So actually we had to go through a very strict selection process and we're really happy that we now have these 100 cities uh, that we are working with. But of course, if you're not living in one of these 100 cities, don't worry because the cities that we are working with are really like inspiration source and will be acting as a test bed for, you know, testing these solutions for climate neutrality. Uh, but then, of course, we will share these results and the 
ultimate objective is that all cities in the European Union will be climate neutral uh, by 2050, which is of course fully in line with our European Green Deal objective to become the first climate neutral continent in the world uh, by 2050. So I'm also very, very pleased to have Commissioner Maria Gabriel with us in this session. Before we listen to the Commissioner who will say more about this mission and how it will really serve as an inspiration for cities across the European Union, let's watch a little video. So this is just to show again how important cities will be to drive forward this transformation because cities is really the place where policy meets people and three quarters of the Europeans actually live in cities. We all know also that cities are responsible and consuming 65% of our energy consumption and con basically emit 70% of greenhouse gas emissions. So we are really, you know, all eyes on our cities to make sure that we will be driving forward this transformation. So now it's my big pleasure and honor uh, to pass the floor to our commissioner, Maria Gabriel. Thank you. Thank you very much, dear Rosalinde, for your introduction, dear, dear mayors, ladies and gentlemen. Well, first of all, I'm delighted to welcome our audience from all over Europe and beyond. And I warmly uh, want to thank our mayors to be together together with us. Well, we can we can say since the beginning that mayors like you are for us mayors with a mission. A mission that is here for the benefits of the citizens, for the benefits of Europe, because we'd like to affirm a European leadership, and because we are innovating. And every one of you is innovating. Uh, that's why, for me, today's uh, meeting is an occasion to discuss. Because if I have to resume, I will use three key words. We need collaboration, we need synergies, we need impact. And that's why it's so important for me to listen to you. How with the active involvement of local authorities, together with researchers, innovators, private sectors, civil society and investors, will be key for a success. And I know that, yes, the mayors are those that perfectly know what's happened on the ground, what are the particularities, but at the same time, what are the strengths when there is an added value to dare and to innovate. So for me, that will be very, very interesting to listen to you, dear mayors, how we can combine research and innovation into a new role, to, to combine with new forms of collaboration, to engage our citizens, and I'm sure that you will have a lot of examples. Now we know uh, your mission, the smart and climate neutral cities mission, is maybe one of the most well known in Europe. But that's a great responsibility for you, because there is a lot of expectations, there is a lot of new uh, crucial elements like the citizens' contracts, the regional networks. So for us, that's an occasion to listen and to learn from you. I just met the new chairs of our five missions, and maybe one suggestion, it will be to not to hesitate to, to meet the new boards of our missions, because the, these people can help to popularize, to communicate, can help you in your actions to connect with others, to build networks, and after all, first to affirm your city as a leader, but don't forget, for us, your cities are innovation hubs. They have to inspire others. They have 
to be with all the other European European cities. And I think that that's a very, very positive thing that we have with the smart cities. Mission is that on one side we have the 100 first selected, but we don't forget the 377 cities that were candidates. And that's why it's important to continue to work with them. If they dared to be candidate, we definitely need to keep them on board and to continue with them. So yes, for me, that's the first, the first thing, collaboration, innovation, and how to popularize it. Of course, second thing, it's synergies. And we all know that's a very, very beautiful word, but we need to transform it into something operational and tangible. And who else that mayors and regional and local authorities can help us to establish synergies between programs, instruments and actions. So we stay very open to your suggestions in order to see how we can be more adequate to the needs of the ground. And of course, impact. Don't forget, missions are one of the main novelties of Horizon Europe. Your mission is very well known, but we need to convince our citizens that these missions are here for them. They will feel the positive impact. And of course, to show that because at the European level, we said it very clearly, our mission is on Earth, together with our mayors, we can succeed. So that's my message to you today. And now I'm very, very eager to listen and to continue to learn from you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Commissioner. Uh, and indeed, I really think, you know, with these missions that are a novelty of the Horizon Europe programme, we're really embarking on a new adventure together. And I think the fact that we are also wanting to co-create these climate city contracts, really involving the local communities, the citizens themselves, I think is the only way forward to accelerate the transition that the European Union so badly needs. So before we now listen to the mayors, let's quickly have a look uh, at the slide poll just to see where our audience is connecting from and I think it's indeed a, a very good spread across the European uh, Union uh, uh, and maybe even beyond uh, uh, and of course uh, we see it's still a hub uh, here in Brussels uh, but also uh, from the north the south the east and the west let me also mention that uh, in addition to the 100 European cities we have also selected 12 cities uh, that are located in countries uh, that are or will be associated to Horizon Europe and the European Commission is also co-leading an international cities mission through mission innovation. So this really means that we are having a very, very strong base for activities to make our cities across the globe climate neutral. Now, without further ado, I'm really, really pleased to introduce our first mayor on the panel today. And this is Mayor Thomas Westphal. Um, Thomas is the mayor of Dortmund uh, in Germany. Uh, and this is not only one of the 100 cities mission, but also currently the innovation capital uh, of Europe. So, Thomas, congratulations with that. That's really great news. And I understood that you had kind of like a lucky charm uh, when the awards for the innovation capital uh, were awarded uh, because I learned that Dortmund, the official symbol of Dortmund is an eagle, but you have a very special animal, which is a rhino with wings, which basically brought you luck to become the innovation capital. So that's really great. We're not here to talk about rhinos, though. Uh, but Thomas, if you could share with us, what is your first experience with the city's mission so far? Yes, thank you very much. And um at first, uh, many greetings to you and to the commissioner from Dortmund, from the European Eye Capital. And the rhino is here. It's Excellent. every time with the rhino here. And everybody talks about unicorns. We talk about rhinos in Dortmund. It's a special way for innovation in our town, in our city. And um, the rhino is uh, the symbol for that because you see that our rhino has wings, you know? And that means we only didn't have only missions. We want to achieve the missions, the goals. And that means every project has to organize and have to run in the end of the day. And we didn't make plans for the sky. We didn't do that. We want to realize that we want that we go real. That's the meaning of this um, symbol for that. And our first uh, experience are very, very, very impressive for us because at first, it's an honor for us that we could be a transmission hub to the other cities. And in the second step, it's good to learn from other cities 
which way is uh, for them a good way, it is possible to get it for us too. And for me, I think we have to learn together to combine two things for the collaborations goals. At first, the technology and the development of the technology, and that have to combine with social capital. And that means as well bridging social capital as also bounding social capital. That means we cannot discuss only about institutions, about money and market. We have to talk about people because they are the men and the women who guarantee that networking is possible, that networking will work. And that's our way into Dortmund. We always said the people are in the center about our plans. That was the reason for our um, claim to say innovation next door, because if we didn't have the people, they want to uh, achieve the goal, it doesn't work. And does that mean um, we cannot only have to look to technologies, we have to look to our competences, to our talents, to our peoples. And that's what we want to discuss with other cities for the climate structure, because it is a huge, huge, huge issue to have climate neutrality in 2030. Because in greater cities, you know what you have to do for that. In all that topics we have to do. It is a great, great chance, but also a great challenges for us. So that's my first experience of that. And I'm very happy about that. And I um, look forward for the next times to work together with you to combine social capital with technology development. Excellent. Thank you so much for these inspiring words. And you're absolutely right. This was the main reason why we actually introduced these missions in the European Programme for Research and Innovation, is to also bring science innovation closer to the citizens. So thank you very much for underlining this. Now, it's my big pleasure and honor to introduce our second mayor of the panel today. And this is Mayor Konrad Fidjovek, I hope I pronounce it correctly, um, of the mayor of the city in Poland called Szeszów. I, I've been practicing a lot on this. Uh, so, so please also to you the same question. Uh, what is your first experience with the city's mission so far? Yeah, thank you and thank you for the invitation. Uh, uh, for our city, participation in mission is a, a great honor. Uh, Zeszów is the smallest city in, among Polish mission cities. However, as I say, a compact city, not too big and not too small, uh, where it is easier to obtain and see the effect of the implemented activities. As I said, we are extremely proud of the that, that the Commission uh, has noticed the potential for climate transformation in the city of Zeszów. And I have to say that we started this process a few years ago, uh, and uh, we have uh, implemented many, uh, many projects, like, for example, replacement of the bus fleet with low emission gas and electric buses. Currently, it accounts for uh, two thirds of all buses, and our next plant. Planet Steps is uh, hydrogen powered buses. Second uh, project, for example, replacement of high emission farm cases and boilers with system heat from municipal network in multi family building and houses. Uh, for example, air quality map uh, plus application for citizens, system project of mounting PV installation on public buildings and and project, umbrella project for uh, of PV installation of the roofs of private houses. Um, uh, so, uh, we, like we, like I said, we have many projects, and I have to say, but that I, I agree with uh, Mr. Mr. Mayor of Dortmund that all these projects are um, uh, made uh, to our citizens, to our people. And it is main goal to this in discuss in in discuss with uh, with uh, about uh, net zero programs in in our city. This uh, process, this modern process, was of course slightly slowed down by the pandemic in, and and of course then the outbreak of war in Ukraine. The uh, Sufi is uh, next to UK, UK, Ukrainian border, and I can say that as a city. We have passed the exam in dealing with the refugee crisis 
just we've received from the President Zelensky title survey, Saver City, as the first city in the world. It also allows us to, to believe that we have a historical predisposition to deal with crises and how we dealt with the refugees crisis, we will deal with the crisis, we, we, we will deal so with the crisis, climate, climate crisis or, or energy crisis. So situation not easy, but we have big hope that this road, this mission, uh, will uh, end positive for us. Thank you. Thank you very much. And indeed, uh, you know, it's very, very true that, you know, cities are really in a pole position to provide the local solutions to these global problems. I also forgot to mention, I mean, you, you've been obviously very, very busy. Well, you all are, of course. Uh, I forgot to mention uh, that, uh, that in your free time uh, you grow organic tomatoes. And I'm told that whenever we visit your city, uh, we, can, uh, we can taste these organic tomatoes. Uh, so hopefully in the future we will have an opportunity to do that. Uh, but let me now move uh, to um, Mr. Nikos Nikolaidis, uh, mayor of Limassol in, in Cyprus, also very warm welcome to you. Thank you so much to be with us today. Uh, and uh, I understand uh, that you have also, you know, yourself changed your lifestyle uh, to move forward and make Limassol uh, climate neutral by 2030. Uh, I'm told that you have changed your big limousine with a driver uh, to a small electric car and a bicycle. So I think that's really excellent. Uh, I, I think also, you know, we need to have kind of like these role models. And I also understand that this was definitely noticed uh, uh, by the media and your constituency, this big change uh, into uh, into the electric uh, car, which was, of course, much smaller. So congratulations for that. And please, uh, grateful if you could also share your first experience with the city's mission. Well, thank you very much for inviting us to this uh, very, very interesting discussion. And thank you to Commissioner Gabriel for uh, being here with us and listening to us. Um, it's a great challenge for us, for Limassol, as, as it is for any city, the participation in this in this program, in this mission, because it's a mission, it's not just a program. And it's not just a, a program or a mission that involves or should involve only the municipalities. It, it should literally involve all stakeholders in our society, in our local society, starting from organizations, from uh, 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 citizens groups, from um, uh, uh, academia, from research organizations, research institutes, private companies. So we have to, in order to achieve this very challenging and difficult target, we have to really mobilize everybody and every single force that we can mobilize within our city. Uh, this you you've mentioned something which is quite true. You said it's about change. Yes, this program is about change. We have to change. We have to change uh, our lifestyle. We have to change our habits. We have to change our mentalities, or speed up this change uh, because uh, we have to admit that we haven't embarked on this on this road uh, because we have been elected within. Uh, the team of the 100, uh, let's say, cities, but it is a path which you have started taking uh, for, some, for some years now, but we have to speed up this path. This, uh, this, uh, this um, what we did so far is that we have, of course, formulated uh, our internal team within the municipality. We have uh, started forming alliances uh, with uh, all these uh, stakeholders, uh, be it uh, the government or organizations or institutions or uh, universities, so that we know that we have a strong network of alliances and collaborators which will work with us uh, towards this, uh, to, towards achieving this, this great target. At, at the same time, I think, and this perhaps is the biggest challenge, is to involve society at large. We have to involve people. We have to, to involve citizens because what we are trying to do, all these changes and projects and targets, could not be realized without the social concession, the agreements, and the participation, the active participation of the people, be it using a bicycle or taking means of transportation other than a private car, or accepting uh, these uh, changes that will have to be brought, uh, sometimes in an abrupt way, because some things will have to be done, and we have to do it within a very short period of time. This is what it's all about. We have to achieve uh, many achievements in a very short period of time. And at the same time, I think, uh, although 
this uh, target of climate neutrality and smart city status refers to each individual city, it is a collective target. It involves all cities, it involves all Europe. So we have to be in touch. We have to share experiences, we have to share expertise, we have to share best practices, and we have to help each other uh, towards this path. Of course, some cities are uh, already uh, moving ahead in a faster pace, others are a bit late starters, but all have to benefit from this sharing of experiences and joining forces. This is what it's all about. It's a collective big mission that we have to uh, walk to, uh, towards it all together. It doesn't help if one city or two or three or four cities achieve climate neutrality. We want Europe to achieve climate neutrality. That's beautifully said. Thank you so much for these inspirational words. And now it's my big honor and pleasure to announce our final and fourth mayor with a mission, uh, Mrs. Sharon Dijksma, the mayor of Utrecht in the Netherlands, my home country. Big welcome to you. It's such a pleasure to have you on this panel with us today. Uh, and I have to share, Sharon, I'm so impressed because you did something amazing uh, back in 2016, because I understand at that time you were the president of the European Council and you were actually in New York City in April 2016 signing the Paris Agreement on behalf of the European Union. How amazing is that? I think that is really absolutely amazing because that is where it all started and, you know, following the Paris Agreement, of course, we developed our ambitious climate policies, our ambitious strategies and, of course, also our ambitious mission with the cities. So, Sharon, for you the same question. Could you please share your first experiences with the city's mission? Well, uh, first of all, thank you very much and also to the commissioner for having us. I think that uh, you are absolutely right. As a former minister for the environment, I was not only signing the Paris Agreement on behalf of the European Union, but also negotiating on uh, Paris in 2015. And I, I could not know at that time how important and relevant the cities are actually to uh, align with the Paris Agreement and to get things done. And I think that we are on the moment in time that things need to be uh, uh, fixed because we are way behind schedule already. It is a difficult task, uh, so I fully agree with what the first mayor from Dortmund was saying, that we need also a social agenda collaborating and supporting the citizens in order to really make this transition for them also as something which they not only believe in, but also benefit from. So that is actually very important. It's not easy to be carbon neutral in 2030. So what we have seen now is that at least it helped out to organize all our um, policy departments more together in order to reach out for this target and it speed things up definitely and that's really necessary so we need to break through the silos but what we also need i think is support from the european commission uh, i saw that there is a lot of um, emphasis on uh, small-scale innovations and what we actually do need is large-scale implementation of proven technology and I would say that this would be something that we could ask the commissioner and the commission itself to support us uh, with, because we really need this um, in order to uh, uh, yeah, set all those big miles that we need to take, because it's only seven years from now uh, that it's already 2030. Excellent. Thank you very, very much. I think this was a very inspiring first round. I think it's very clear that we have really very dedicated and ambitious mayors to really make this change happen, that we do need, of course, to mobilize all the people uh, around this mission and that this is actually a collective mission for the whole of the European Union. Now, there are so many possible solutions, so much to do in so little time. I would like to turn for a second to our audience and ask our audience what, in your view, should be a top priority for the cities to reach climate neutrality. So what should the cities do first? So please, if you go to Slido, type in what you think, you know, if possible, in one or two words, a top priority for the cities 
to address first to become climate neutral and then we will revisit uh, the Slido poll uh, in a minute. Uh, but then you can already think about that. But in the meantime, uh, I would be very interested then to hear from our four mayors what kind of support you urgently need. Uh, and the mayor of Utrecht already uh, gave a very clear indication. Uh, I think it would also be interesting, you know, in the type of support you need, if you could specify whether it is the commission that could help you, whether you also have any expectations towards your national governments and how the commission could help there. And maybe I would start uh, again uh, with the mayor of Utrecht, just to change the order a bit. Uh, if you could say something more, what do you expect in terms of support, both from us, but also from the national government? Thank you. I, I think that what actually is necessary is that uh, cities are um, much more also uh, in the heart of the policy of the national government. And uh, for instance, to implement together uh, the national determined contributions would be a first step. Secondly, I would ask uh, not only the Commission, but also national governments, to support us with the financial means which are necessary for transitions in, for instance, sustainable mobility or even having the transition on the energy because we try now to get off uh, our housing uh, from uh, gas even uh, and put much more solar and wind energy at the heart of uh, the energy transition. And this is not cheap. So we need um, means and funding for this. And, and thirdly, I, th I think that if you look um, also closer to my work, I, I have been asked to be the special envoy on behalf of ICLAI and LGMA cities within the UNFCC um, uh, framework uh, in order to get the cities much more at the heart of the policy also in Sharm el Sheikh towards the COP there. And, and what we see is that we need sometimes some expertise also um, uh, on, on uh, innovations, on uh, how to really be effective in the transitions uh, that we have. And that, that are various transitions. It's not only one. It's not only on mobility or only on housing or only on energy. It's ex actually something which asks a holistic approach. And um, uh, for that, we, we, we need a lot uh, of uh, support. So I would urge the Commission Please help us out with funding. Also, when it has to come from private sector, you could maybe uh, uh, advocate for us uh, for this. Uh, uh, treat us as equal. Uh, so do not start a competition between uh, the 100, but help us out all. Uh, these are some of the uh, suggestions that I would uh, have. And uh, last remark, please. Uh, let us as mayors also uh, stress out the, the relevance of, of our cities at COP uh, in Sharm el Sheikh. We try to organize a high level ministerial on cooperation between uh, governments and cities and the international family. So I hope actually to see you all there. Excellent. Thank you so much. Uh, that's really exciting also to hear that the, the cities will be high on the agenda uh, at the COP. Uh, and thank you also for these really very concrete uh, suggestions and concrete requests for support. And I also like in particular, you know, the, the remark, of course, I mean, we need to mobilize the people, we need to mobilize the funding, uh, but also the, the no competition uh, request, I think, is really a very important one. Indeed, this is not a competition. We're all in this together. And the idea is really that we can learn from each other and that we can go faster together you know in, in a better way so thank you very much for that I would ask the same question uh, now uh, to Nikos so Nikos we are listening what type of support does your city need to achieve the mission well, the, goal the easy answer is that you can get and we can use all the support you can get but this this is very much uh, the the reality of what we really need. Well, first of all, we need we need expertise. We need guidance. We need um, uh, this kind of uh, technological support, and we expect to get it from technocrats from the European Commission and um, also from technocrats within our country. And of course, we have to look into uh, the uh, the institutions of our country, the government, for example. Uh, from which we expect that, uh, besides, expect a series of practical means of support, uh, which should involve, uh, besides, 
uh, expertise, also the help to overcome uh, some uh, procedural matters, uh, tendering, for example, which uh, are needed in order to uh, uh, speed up things, to make things happen. Uh, if we should base, uh, if we base ourselves and our procedures on uh, what we do until now, uh, I'm afraid that we won't run at the pace and at the speed that we should run. Uh, and of course. Uh, all the stakeholders that uh, should be involved in this in this uh, effort uh, should be willing, uh, each and everyone, to uh, have its own contribution, uh, be it in uh, advice, in expertise, uh, in funding, because we'll be needing some local funds, as well as uh, European funds, of course, and this is extremely important. And, of course, I will end up by repeating what... Uh, my dear uh, Mayor of Utrecht said that this is not uh, a competition game, it's a collective effort. Uh, we are a team, all the cities, all the European cities are a team, and we are playing against climate change. This is our opponent, this is what our effort uh, should be targeted in order to beat this uh, danger which faces Europe uh, and it's uh, mounting and it's becoming worse and worse. If uh, we don't do anything. Absolutely, I love it. We are a team, all together on the same team, playing against climate change, our opponent. Uh, beautifully said. Thank you so much for these inspiring words. Let's indeed move to now the mayor of Sheshuf to, to also hear specifically for your city, what kind of support does your city need uh, to achieve the emissions goal? And again, you know, from us, commission, maybe national governments, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, in the moment, I will say two uh, examples. But first, I, I would like to say that um, uh, achieving climate neutrality is uh, such an ambitious process that support in its uh, implementation will be needed in many uh, areas, ranging from substantive support, uh, development of uh, municipal climate contracts associated with an action and financing plan, uh, creating a strong local ecosystems, uh, Mr. Mayor of Limassol said it's uh, very, very mm, uh, good, uh, mm, uh, and we are trying to make this uh, ecosystem also in in our city. We made uh, big uh, team, uh, big net zeros, and smart team for Zesuf. Uh, of uh, also, we need exchange of experiences uh, between, between cities, networking, of course, uh, ending with practice, and implementation of developed activities, model solution, and seeking financing for these activities. Uh, uh, it, it, like we said, it will be necessary to involve uh, any stakeholders, business, and non-governmental um, uh, organization, but uh, uh, I back to, to these uh, two examples. For example, uh, we prepare in Zeshuf digital maps of green, um, digital map of pollution, uh, and map with uh, heat islands in our city. But we need uh, experts, we need uh, companies to analyze, uh, to, um, to, 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 to research, to seek uh, um, uh, um, uh, effects to 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 make um, uh, you know uh, to to create uh, uh, waste when where we can when where we have to to go. Uh, it's uh, first uh, first example and uh, second as we uh, we we five poor cities we trying to cooperate that uh, we decide to work together on application from pilots. Uh, and I think in the future we need uh, scale mechanism, you know, for the for the um, uh, scale uh, effects of our uh, of our pilots. It will be necessary, and I think uh, uh, it, uh, it 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 needs money, of course, but about money uh, said our our colleagues uh, before. So uh, it is uh, too. Two, two examples from from Zeshuf in uh, in uh, area of needs, I think. Excellent. Thank you so much for sharing this. 
And now let's go to our last mayor with a mission on the panel with the same question for Dortmund. So what kind of support does Dortmund need to achieve the mission's goal? Yes, um, Utrecht is not so far away from Dortmund. Maybe that's the reason that I totally agree with Sharon and uh, what she said about the political system and situation in Europe and uh, in Germany also as, as well uh, obviously in Netherlands. That means cities have to be in the center of every program, of every project for climate politics because cities are the reality of climate change and climate politics. In the cities, there you find the results, there you find the right programs, not in the global programs alone. That couldn't be work. That means it's wrong to think cities are on the end of the pipe of the process of climate change politics. No, it is in the middle. In the first, I have to find a way to mobilize their competence, to mobilize their experience. That what you do now with this panel and with this whole program from the European Union, thanks for this. And in the nutshell, I will say, we need more resources for the climate politics. That means money, that means workers, that means people, and that means technologies. And in every city, and that's right, in a whole European framework, because it is good to say we want to achieve a global issue with local politics. But in the end of the day, we need both. We need a global answer and a local answer together. That's maybe what you mean with a team. That's right. And that's what I think what we need to our goal on your support. Thank you for that. Thank you so much. I, I find it so inspiring. I also hear, you know, lots of convergence. And even though we are not physically together, I can really feel the energy coming from you and, and the city. So this is really absolutely great uh, and fully agree. I mean, the cities are really at the center and in pole position to deliver these solutions to the big challenges that we are facing. I'm personally very proud. I mean, I've been in European policy making for over 20 years. And what I love about the city's mission is that we basically start for the first time by listening and by taking the individual needs of the cities as the starting point. I think this is really a paradigm shift in, in European policy making and that's why I'm also personally so enthusiastic about, about this mission. Now let's take a moment uh, and, uh, and look at the uh, top priorities that were identified uh, by our audience. Um, Oh, wow. I mean, I've been doing word clouds uh, in all my sessions, but I have not seen such a crowded uh, word cloud uh, so far. So we can really see here that our audience has identified a lot of top priorities for you, uh, mayors. Uh, we see public transport, energy efficient buildings and renewable energy still sticking out a bit, but there's really, you know, a lot there. So, I mean, on the one hand, to me, this really shows also the enthusiasm uh, of our audience to really make change happen in the cities. But I guess it will be quite a difficult task for you as mayors to really kind of like prioritize, you know, which projects you are launching first in this pathway towards climate neutrality. And we have a few minutes left in our session. So maybe I could just ask you, uh, all of you, very quickly, if you look at, you know, this, uh, this list of top priority identified by our audience, could you please share with us maybe one or two top priorities that you're currently focusing on in your cities? Um, and here, maybe, if it's okay, I would like to now start with, uh, with the mayor of Dortmund uh, to hear, like, very quickly, one or two top priorities uh, for your city on climate neutrality. Yes, uh, public transport is the first one, totally right, and uh, uh, energy efficiency buildings is the second one, because that's the core of, our, of a city. Excellent. Let's, uh, let's move then now uh, to Cyprus, Limassol. I think sustainable mobility, be it public transport or using bicycles or walking, uh, in general using alternative means of transport other than a private car. I think this is perhaps uh, together with the, the energy efficiency of the buildings, the, the top two uh, you know, priorities and targets of, of the mission program. Thank you. Then we move to Poland, Shishuf. For me, if, uh, I would like to add uh, sustainable design of 
urban space. It's very important in our city. And also, I think, um, uh, change in mindset. Uh, and in this area, climate and environmental education for all uh, citizens, for all stakeholders in our cities. Great. And then, last but not least, the Netherlands, Utrecht, top priorities. Well, I, I think that our uh, problem is that we need all of these changes. So both in sustainable mobility, we work a lot with getting people on the bike and not using uh, gas cars anymore, but also energy efficiency buildings, um, zero emission and the whole uh, transition on, on uh, um, renewable energy. I think that all the topics which were hit by the boxes uh, in your word cloud are uh, on our agenda and we try to, to, to uh, make a holistic approach of them. So one vision and a lot of action. I love it. One vision and a lot of action. I think, you know, let's translate this also to the city's mission that, you know, for all the cities in the European Union, we have one vision. We want to move towards climate neutrality as fast as we can. And we have a lot of action that we are taking also collectively together uh, to get there as fast as we can. So I would like to really thank a lot all of you for being here with us, our active audience, our four mayors with a mission, and of course, Commissioner Gabriel for listening to us. It has been a truly inspiring session. I think, you know, we can conclude that cities are really at the forefront in tackling the, the big global challenges that we are facing. And I'm very confident that with this collaboration that we have, the inspiration and the enthusiasm we will be getting there and we all can play our part on the way to climate neutrality. Thank you for watching and see you next time. <laughs>